Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and joining me, a couple good friends of mine in uh, Cold Brew and Scratch. What we're going to be doing here is talking about some of the methodology and the thought process that goes into the bare bones and design of a tier list. And we're going to kind of clash on some ideas and try to come to a consensus on how to go about a group project tier list. So let's get into it. All righty. Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? What's up, Cold Brew? Hey, man. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, this will be the best tier list ever, I believe. That's right. That's right. What's <laughs> up, Scratch? How you doing, man? Yeah, doing pretty good. Man, looking forward to get this uh, cracking on, you know, something to be on point for everybody. You know, we're trying. We're going to try to put it from every perspective, early game, mid game, end game, and that will kind of like help everyone understand what's going behind creating it you know that's kind of like the point of this uh this video yep yep for sure and you know what we're trying to do is uh is set up a, a system where it's not just one person where it's five six seven people that have all been playing for a long time and know a lot about the game we're trying to remove as much individual bias as possible and have many different uh, advanced level players working on a tier list and then it's going to automatically port over to the site i can show you what that looks like and boom it's going to automatically go from the data that we input and the algorithm is then going to calculate an average grade and then it's going to populate over here on the website raid shadowpro.gg where we've got the tier list laid out and it, and it takes the spreadsheet and makes it look fancy but right now what you're seeing is the back end of what we're looking at internally when we develop a tier list so scratch did you want to kick off some of the thoughts that you were having in terms of a general overarching design thought process because i know it's really difficult to it's really difficult to grade champions because you've got early game end game are they better for progression are they better for speed running and and kind of let me know where your head was at on on some of the design here absolutely so i'm i'm a more of an end game player and eventually every single one of you guys will end up being an end game player that's kind of like the whole idea why we're playing the game you know and when you're moving to the end game, it's going to become very important on how fast you can run things to save time. You want to be more efficient, right? Time is the ultimate resource in the entire world, right? The most important currency. So you, you want to save time. You want to be faster in dungeons. So I feel like this really affects a lot of the rating on the champions. That's something that can be easily sorted out by just making a small check mark on them being like, these are great for speed runs, you know, for kind of like giving them a special emblem mark saying these are the right champions for speedruns. Now, when we are talking about early game towards progression, support champions, similar with Duchess Lily 2, or we have Sifi, or we have these sort of champions, are amazing, right? Like, they can carry your entire team through pretty much any, any sort of content, but at the same time, they're not necessarily the right champions that you would want to use in every single dungeon, like in Keeps, for example. I feel like Yes, probably in the first one month to two months till you're getting a bit of gear and stuff like that. Free to play, it might take you three months just as an idea. You're going to use support champions pretty much in every single dungeon to carry your team. After that, you're just going to drop them because how I mentioned, you're going to want to improve your times. You're going to want to have better teams. And I feel like those champions are not as efficient in these dungeons, in these particular areas anymore, even though they are very powerful as champions. You know, I feel like they just don't necessarily need to have a very high rating in keeps for idea, as an idea, you know? Yeah. And, That's and, kind of like how I feel. Yep. And I, all of that is relevant. I agree with you. Uh, it, it gets difficult uh, because you'd almost have to have like 10,000 different categories, you know, like, like mm. speed run and progression for every single category. Um, and then you get into like the demon lord and oh, this champion's amazing when you don't do unkillable, but this champion's amazing when you do do unkillable. So exactly, it, it, you have to kind of try to just do your, because I've tried segmenting tier lists and having like three different tier lists and stuff like beginning end game and, and, and all this. And what you end up seeing is that people are like, I just want a tier list. I, I just want a simple, I don't want to have three different tier lists pulled up. So you just do your best and and to take everything into account when you when you rate champions is, is kind of all you can do. But yeah, Colbrew, did you agree with that or have anything to add before we move on to a 
Yeah, I mean, uh, that's the best way to make a tier list is just try to, to create something that gives the value to the the average viewer that is going to just pull it up and try to find, okay, I just got this champion. What is his real worth? How can I understand if he's good here, if he's good in the dungeons, if he's good in the arena? How can I understand that? And th that's why the tier list exists. And that's why everybody has been trying to make one since we've started making content for the game. Like in in the in an ideal world, we would have had a tier list where I, I would imagine like you you just have a champion, and then once you get a new one, it updates on how good your all your other champions are compared to the new one that you have. That would be the ideal case, but that is something very very difficult to make. So this is the best case um, that you can make in terms of providing that instant information to somebody that is looking uh, that doesn't know the game as well as us and just looks okay i got chris what is he good for and then you yeah. immediately find this through this one yep and i you know i've always i uh, tried to like think about who your market is like like someone like scratch who's top 10 in platinum arena scratch doesn't need to look up a tier list like scratch knows the game People that are in Platinum Arena, they don't need to pull it up and look. The people that your market is for a tier list are going to be the people that are early game, mid game, or they just started Rachel Legends and they're, they're just curious. They want to know like, oh, who's the good legendaries? Who's the popular ones? So I've always kind of shaded it towards a little bit more of a progression grade and uh, because those are the kind of people that are going to be looking up a tier list. Uh, that's kind of my thought process on it. Yeah, I definitely agree on that. Like, that's gonna be the main the main market for a tier list. The people that are curious to to find out. Like, I'm pulling shards today. I'm newish to the game. I'm gonna check. Okay, I just got, I don't know, like Yumeko out of nowhere, and I'm gonna be like, okay, is she good anywhere? You know. So I'm gonna click on it, and I'm gonna be like, damn, she's she's a ten out of ten. You know. So I feel like yeah, that's actually a, a good uh, argument to the speed runs and all that. But all these things can be sorted out in a very well organized tier list. So that's the whole idea of being multiple ones, multiple people doing it actually. I might have different a different uh, perspective on it. You guys have your own things and like this we're kind of like combining everything to create the ultimate tier list for our viewers, you know. So like is it is going to be a great stuff once once we're going to once we're going to be done with it, yeah. Yeah, and I want to ask your guys' uh, opinion on the methodology here of the grading scale. Um, because I get some people that are confused about this. Like, what are these 11s and 12s? And and why isn't it just 1 through 10? So I'll quickly describe it for like 30 seconds. I'll let you guys respond if you agree or disagree or, or would want to change anything. But So I, I, I've been doing tier lists for years. And I've noticed if I do a tier list for raid and I do everything like 1 to 10, what I end up with is like, 92 champions ranked as 10 like you know duchess is a 10 in the arena well so is like skull crown uh, uh, you know but but those two champions are very very different so it's like i want i want like 11 and 12 11 is meta 12 is super meta like god tier like 12 is duchess in the arena or warlord in the arena so that's why I, you know, instead of just having a bunch of champions bottlenecked at 10, a little bit of a separation there, but you guys can let me know if you agree or disagree or, change or want to change anything. So I'm going to start since Colbrew is being a bit uh, shy. Uh, um, <laughs> he's thinking, he's deep in thought. <laughs> yeah, I know. He was like a calculated kind of guy. I was ready to talk. Okay, <laughs> go, go. Since so I... I was actually one of the persons who asked, like, why why you have 11 and 12 there? Because I, I didn't kind of, like, caught the idea without without actually asking. And it it makes perfect sense. And I, I do agree that it's going to be a good system like this. How you mentioned, we have the god tier champions that need to shy over the rest of them, you know? So I feel like grading them like this is, is, is going to be pretty good, yeah. Kind okay. of like making the 10th the star, basically, you know? 10th star. Yeah, 10 and means like great. like you're really good there, um, mm. but then you got to go like the meta and the god tier. Um, but you go yeah. ahead, Cole Brew. What were you going to say? Uh... Yeah, I, I, it, it makes sense to give like a 12 to to the champions that will always be relevant for, for that kind of content, regardless of what the meta is. So if, if a new patch comes out, will that make uh, Sifi useless? Um, there's there's no chance she becomes useless ever just because of how strong her kid is, how universal you know a revive 
revive giving full turn meter it's just insane right so mm. uh that that kind of skill becomes uh always relevant uh even if the the meta completely changes right now uh the same thing goes for something like a warlord it has to be something like very very big that removes him from the equation um in terms of of how the game works so um i like the idea behind having an 11 having a 12 uh, I, I went and Google, uh, Google. I went and searched right now for Allure specifically to see her grading for the Fire Knight, and I would have considered her as a twelve. Just to give an example to everyone watching right now, um, I, I would consider her as a twelve for the Fire Knight, but she's a she's a ten. So might be something for debate over there. Uh, uh, well, you know, yeah, um, and, and it's just not to, updated. Yeah, yeah. Just so this is the whole point of what we're doing <laughs> is some of this stuff is, right. uh, you know, we're kind of like taking a tier list that I had and a template that I had, and we're going to be porting it yeah. into our into our team project. So, yeah, Allure, I would agree with you. I, I would say definitely eleven, but probably a twelve. Uh, but and then a twelve mm -hmm. would in the Fire Knight would be like Lysandra. You know, uh, Lysandra is obviously a twelve. Um, so yeah, like there's things that we need to go through. Um, because and 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 keep things up there i mean there's like ten thousand cells on this thing like you're gonna find random yeah, that, that's the whole it's, point it's of having insane. multiple eyes on it um is like wait a minute did you see the allures and eight in the fire night oh yeah we gotta change that like that's the whole point of having multiple people kind of combing through this but yeah i agree with you i can update it right now while i'm here look at that boom <laughs> I, I just yeah i i just thought of the fire night. i saw the fire night there and i thought okay who's who's at 12 in the fire night I was trying to think of it because because when you mentioned what a twelve is, I was like, okay, what's yeah, a twelve? A, a, a lure is definitely is definitely yeah. the one of them in there, you know. And um, mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to I will quickly you, you were talking about the potion keeps. So there's a few different things I want to touch on and get your perspective on. Um, you guys have done uh, you guys have done free to play accounts a little bit more recently than I have. It's been about two years for me, I think. How long does it take? until support champions are irrelevant in support keeps i think cold brew you would know uh like is it one month six months i would say longer than six months there's there's not gonna be, especially now with the addition of uh, uh you know keeps to 20 it, it they have become much much stronger and you need some sort of either high damage champions in there and that's all up to rng or you you can't ignore supports. There's no way that you can ignore a a reviver because, uh, especially on a on a newer account that is six months old, you'll you'll need a very strong uh, composition to completely ignore the support. So, and I'm I don't think I'm assuming on a free to play. I'm or I'm not. I sh I'm not. I shouldn't say assuming. I'm guessing the toughest would be like uh, the magic keep and the. Sp Spirit keep maybe spirit, yeah yeah magic spirit yeah, yeah probably yeah 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 actually the magic void game. arcane are, are pretty easy and another mm -hmm. thing that we'll have to this will be a separate video um but another thing we're gonna have to sit down and do is tweak the algorithm um so this algorithm for the overall grade it's not just an average of all the different cells it's actually weighted so it's got a formula right there where it's taking each uh category and assigning a certain weight to it. So, you know, you'll see like, it'll be like 13% for book value and then it's 16% for demon Lord, you know, uh, and like 18% for arena. So we're going to have to go through uh, 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 and think about that kind of more deeply and, and how much mm. we want to weight each area of the game f for the overall grade. Because right now the algorithm is spitting out that Crisk is actually the best champion in the game for like a tier list context. Uh, probably just because he's right. so good in so many different areas. Yeah, I feel like he deserves it though. Like I feel like he deserves it. Probably what I would change, I would say Duchess might be the next, the next champion to Krisk. But I feel like Krisk is definitely rocking the crown so far. If you if you're just looking, thinking of getting a Krisk early on, mid game on a new account or having it on an end game account, you're you're just gonna use Krisk, man. Like he's just so powerful Everywhere. all around. Like exactly, yeah. He can farm XP pretty, pretty good as well with AOE attacks. If you build him for damage, just as an idea, he can uh, do. He can support you in keeps. He can do Hydra. He can do clan boss. He can do arena. He can do dungeons. He can do freaking everything. And it's just how complex is his kit? How much? How much stuff he offers as a champion? You know. 
Yeah, because what you end I, up seeing, I don't know if you guys can have my screen pulled up, but what you end up seeing is, you know, a champion like Chris ends up at the top, a champion like Trunda is on the third row. Because Trunda, it, 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 like, so what What a, What an overall tier list does is it kind of rewards general utility, like Chris, and it kind of mm. punishes niche. Because if I go back to the spreadsheet, Trunda's probably like an 11 or 12 in the arena. But in a tier list, she ends up kind of falling a little bit, a little bit down from these general utility champions. Yeah, that, that, that sounds fair enough, though. And I feel like the thing that we were discussing with the keeps and support champions and all that can all be balanced in the algorithm. You know, we just give less value for the keeps and then that's going to balance out with the rest of the, the things, you know. So that's, that's a, a, a good thing that we're going to have to, to, to discuss, to go more in depth. On yeah, the wh what about if it was possible to increase the weight? Because you mentioned that it's a weighted average, right? Mm. So what, what about if you could increase the weight of, of a champion being great in the arena? Um, and then you know remove the the weighting that let's say the clan boss does but you want to have a great arena champion that also can work for the dungeons as well so would that change the tier list in that way maybe that's way more difficult to do but yeah i mean that could be I, I done would it would, that... yeah i would really to to get it all boiled down to one number i don't know if you you'd have to like set up a checkbox where you can like remove a certain area from the calculation or something mm -hmm. but Mm. Yeah, yeah. If I feel like that would that would just mess up the other champions, would kind of like devalue them if you just put a niche champion at the top. I feel like once once you're done with all the grading, then you have your little box how we have it right now on the on the actual website where you can see them all nice and organized. And you see books, you see auras, you see kind of like what they have attack support, whatever they're doing. And there, once you click on them on or just as a small icon can kind of like be a mark where this champion It is, does. Like if you can see my screen, godly, you know, when yeah. you mouse over it, it pulls up their aura. Like you see Duchess all battle 19%. Yeah. Mm, when you, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you mouse over it, it pops it up and, and we'll continue to try and like innovate and, and make it better. So for fun here uh, on the way out, uh, which, which one kind of stands out to you that you would first want to like go look at? Like, like, wait a minute, why are they ranked so high? Or wait a minute, why are they ranked so low? Just kind of a cold brew. Are there any of these that, that stand out to you on this general uh, screen here, the overlay? Um, or does it look mostly okay for like the first couple rows, like one, two, and three? I guess I can start it off. Um, I don't know if Draco is that strong anymore. This is spitting him out as like the 10th best legendary in the game. I don't know that Draco is that strong anymore. Um, mm -hmm. He's not a Eurogrim. Of dragon anymore, I think. I don't know about Eurogrim being uh he's in the third row for me right now i think he yep. lost a lot of value i think nekmathar down here at 7.9 is a lot better than that Maybe i feel like can't. ugo is definitely a 12 for hydra is an idea yeah yeah like yeah yeah ugo is uh, has, has really shown the power mm. of that kid contra contra definitely. has aged pretty well too yeah, not bad, yeah, actually. With, with the recent change to the Hydra, yeah. Okay, Found, cool. Uh, how to use. Tatura for Clan Boss, I feel like she's definitely... definitely yeah, I, I missed out. Yep, I missed out on Tatura. It's the only fusion I ever missed. Uh, just because, like, my, my RSL, uh, like, crashed. Uh, and I didn't get the, the fragments I need. It was brutal, but... Uh -oh. um, but yeah, um, like, no, uh, the, we just wanted to do a video, uh, just updating everybody on our thought process and, uh, and stay tuned. We'll, we'll probably get together and do another video, uh, where we, where we, uh, where we calculate the algorithm and how we want it to weight different mm. things. That'll be its own like 30 minute discussion, uh, <laughs> where we, yeah, yeah, where sure, we yeah. figure out how we want to weight everything and, uh, and we'll get to, uh, we'll get that uploaded here on one of our channels, but yeah, thanks guys. Make sure and subscribe. Uh, I'll, I'll link to cold brew and scratch down below. They're two of the best doing it in raid. So definitely check them out. And do you guys have anything? you want to say on the way out yeah guys give us a couple of weeks two three four five weeks but i'm gonna guarantee you that this is going to be the best freaking tier list in this yeah. game so just hang in there let us let us do it and uh we're gonna wait for the feedback after once we're done this right now is just is just a skeleton look at it like that basically yeah. it's just and we're always open to to suggestions in the comments mm, like, definitely yeah. if anything is is in your minds just share it 
Yep, and, and we'll be pulling it up on stream and updating stuff with viewers and yeah, all sorts of feedback from as many people as uh, how we can make things like this as accurate as possible. But yeah, all right. Well, thanks for taking the time, guys, and I will see you around soon.